any regression in the context of um, multicollinearity is that we have our our tolerance variable here and you might recall in some previous uh, videos I've talked about the variance inflation factor and the tolerance and I've, I've suggested they're basically representing the same thing and we can see the tolerance is very low and in fact in the video I think if I remember correctly I said a tolerance of 0 0.10 or less uh, may be contended to be somewhat problematic. I think even 0 0.05 might be okay-ish. Uh, I think most people would agree with that. But once you get to tolerance of 0 0.009, uh, arguably you might be having some problems. But in my opinion, uh, in the nonlinear regression analysis, we totally expect our IQ and IQ squared variable to correlate very highly. I mean, let's look at the correlation between IQ and IQ squared it's going to be 0 0.9 something, 0.995. OK, and that explains why we've got so low tolerance in our um, regression. But our standard errors aren't um, gone crazy. Uh, the standard error in the first model for IQ was 0 0.009. And it's jumped up by a big factor, but it's still not crazy. And that's why our, we still have statistical significance for our two beta, beta coefficients. But that won't always be the case. There'll be cases where your beta weights uh, won't be statistically significant. And yet, you'll still get an R-squared change value that's actually statistically significant. Uh, so that's just the way it is. Uh, when you do uh, when you do hierarchical multiple regression to test a nonlinear effect using IQ or one variable and a squared variable. Okay, so that's probably uh, all I'm going to talk about in terms of the main effects, in terms of how I prefer to do a multiple regression analysis for linear effects. There is another way to do it in multiple regret in uh, in SPSS and I caution you against doing it this way even though it might be argued to be the easiest way to do it um, yeah and then I want to talk about something else uh, briefly so I'll go into analyze and then you go into regression and there's a thing called there's an option here called curve estimation and it will actually do a uh, nonlinear regression much like I did earlier or just a few minutes ago and uh, I've got my I only have to include one variable which is my normal IQ variable and then I click on quadratic and I'm going to tell it that's I only want to estimate one bend in the regression line because that's what I expect there to be so IQ is automatically going to create an IQ squared variable by clicking this option and let's see what SPSS gives us it gives us um, it gives us uh, the model summary and parameter estimates associated with the r squared values, uh, but it doesn't give us the key piece of information, which is the r squared change value. All it's giving me is the linear. It's saying linear is equal to an r squared of 0.124 with an f of 49.08. These numbers should uh, conjure up some memories because we got that up here when we did our regression analysis. Uh, here's the f. It's called f change here. It's really just a normal f value, 49.08. So that's for the linear effect, uh, r squared of 0.124. So SPSS is doing that here for the curvy linear curve estimation, 0.124, f of 49.08. And it's saying it's um, statistically significant. And then it gives us the quadratic effect. But it doesn't give us it, the quadratic effect alone. It gives us it in a combined model. And it gets, says the r squared of 0.177 with an f of 37.04. Now we got that in this model here the ANOVA, so it's the same ANOVA, 37.04 F value, and it's giving it us here as well, 37.04, and it's saying it's statistically significant, but it's that's the combined model of linear and quadratic, and trust me, you can fool yourself into thinking, oh, well, I've got a quadratic effect, because that's what SPSS is telling me here, but it's not. It's just telling you that combined using linear and quadratic independent variables, you have a statistically significant R squared value. But trust me, you can have a non-significant uh, 
quadratic effect, and it's really just the linear effect that's carrying all the weight in the regression effect.